Gee, how tough is it to uh, follow the most influential person in New Zealand, even virtually? Thanks, Rod. Uh, like Rod said, I'm the chief executive of the Canterbury Development Corporation. That's the economic development agency for the Christchurch City Council. And uh, contrary to Kyla's statement, I absolutely will be using notes, just in case this goes wrong. Um, I'm not going to talk overly about the rebuild or the earthquake today. Rather, I'm going to focus on what happens next into the longer term, the things we need to think about. And I will. We got slides coming up. Thank you. I want to talk about the third influx of talent. That's a really flash way of saying some clever people are going to want to come here. And that's a really good thing and something we should be encouraging. I'd like to start with a quote from a bloke that knows a thing or two about challenging adversity. That's Winston Churchill. He said, kites rise highest against the wind. And that's a great analogy for the recovery of Christchurch. The statement on screen that this city will be more than what it was reflects my strong belief that the rebuild of Christchurch will be successful and that the incredible efforts of national and local government, the private sector, and our wonderful, resilient, and dedicated communities will overcome the undeniable challenges that still lie in front of us. And that despite the hurdles that face us, our kite will fly high and our city will be better than it was before. But having a successful rebuild is not enough. Repairing things is not enough. Christchurch's population also needs renewing. Even before the earthquakes, our population growth had leveled off. And like all Western world economies, we have a rapidly aging workforce. In 2031, the single largest population demographic in the city will be the over 65s. We will require 5% population growth over the natural birth rate, that's some 20,000 people, just to have the same number of people in the workforce that we have today. We are not alone in this challenge. Every major Western economy and city faces the same issue, and the race for talent is a well-documented story. But Christchurch has been shaken out of its lethargy. We have been afforded a unique opportunity by the earthquakes, a chance to differentiate ourselves, to separate from the pack, aided by a set of one-off circumstances that set us up to be able to attract highly talented individuals to Christchurch. I'd like to briefly digress to a couple more quotes. I, I promise their relevance will become apparent later on. Winston Churchill said, the further you look back, the further, the further you can look forward. And Steve Jobs said, innovation is the difference between followers and leaders. And these quotes are both relevant because you see, Christchurch has already seen two great migrations of innovative entrepreneurial risk takers and they have fundamentally shaped our community into what it is today. The first great migration came from Polynesia. Talented visionaries, possibly the most skilled natural navigators the world has ever seen. The Maori settled in Aotearoa, and Naitahu became the first people of Otatahi, or Christchurch, as it is also known. They built a community with deep links to the land and the natural ecosystem. They developed new solutions to problems, and they flourished. The second great migration came from Europe. Again, talented, risk-taking entrepreneurs, leaving the old world behind for the opportunities of the new. They arrived and settled using new technologies, naturally adapting to their unfamiliar environment and innovating to create new solutions in construction, agriculture, and technology. 
that allowed them to prosper. Both groups have naturally innovated as a way of life and it is ingrained into our psyche. The Kiwi mantra of give it a go is far more powerful than we give it credit for. Fast forward to today. Christchurch now has a modern economy, a successful high-tech manufacturing sector, a growing IT industry, and an emerging wave of next generation technology. And we continue to lead the world in agriculture, agri-tech, and related fields. All of these have been created, nurtured, and evolved by our innovative natures. Behind our industry sits an entire regional innovation system, a complex and complete ecosystem of education, research, development, funding, and business adoption across a wide range of sectors. We have world-class tertiary institutions, research institutes, and incubators, all here in Christchurch, working to provide the ideal launching pad for new ideas and cutting edge businesses. So with these tools and the rebuild, we are in a position to take advantage of a global slowdown. But to do this, we must consider the realities of the global perception of Christchurch after the earthquakes. The reality of post-earthquake Christchurch is that we will not be a preferred destination for the risk adverse, the careful, and the conservative. No loss there then. <laughs> but today's global early adopters, the innovators, the entrepreneurs and the risk takers, they will see the opportunity and they will want to come. They will find a city that still has all of its natural advantages, its space, its beauty, still has its innovation system, still has its network of research, development, and commercialization. And after the rebuild, it will have new infrastructure, cutting edge technology, world-class communications and data networks, and a vibrant modern central city with all of the social, cultural, and community elements that can make anyone feel comfortable and at home. No pressure, Roger. And these people and businesses, these early adopters, they will want to come here, and we need to encourage them to do so, to welcome them, because you see, they're just like us, and like our history, and they will add to our city, and our culture, and make it a better place. To illustrate the different futures open to the city, um, I've used a little bit of CDC modeling um, around, based around GDP growth, um, and the results are, well, they speak for themselves. So this first line, this is actual GDP up to the, the latest data set. Go back one. This next slide is a recovery that puts us back where we were. Um, gives us what we had, doesn't really step change Christchurch. The red curve represents an incomplete recovery and a stagnant economy. This is actually based on 10 similar sized global cities who lost their ability to attract and retain young people. The light purple curve is an okay recovery. It shows some signs of growth and some productivity improvements, but it is not enough to step change the perceptions of Christchurch and it is not enough to grow the population base. In fact, none of these curves include population growth, and the red curve actually assumes a declining population, especially amongst the young. Now the dark purple curve. Christchurch is the best small city in Australasia, a vibrant CBD, strong growth, new markets being facilitated by an influx of highly talented people into the city. You can see the shape of the curve has changed and a marked gap appears. 
The city is accelerating forward and away from its past. So you see, the future of Christchurch is not just about what we had before, not just about the rebuild. It's about attracting and encouraging a whole new wave of people, the third great wave of migration into our city. In closing, talented people are going to want to come here. We need them to, we should encourage them to, and our city is going to be more than what it was. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob.